Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to be diving in to a little bit of open computers and seeing what we can't come up with. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today, I hope you guys all have your thinking caps on because we are going to be diving into open computers. I went ahead and unlocked open computers, and this is just going to be really for the fun of me sort of experimenting with this mod for the first time. Um, so I will be using somebody else's code. I will be having that linked down in the description below if you guys want to try it out. Um, but we're going to be trying to get set up kind of like a in-game clock. And that's that's about as basic as I need to be working with um, as I know very little about coding. I mean, especially in Lua um, or any Linux-based um, type of uh, environment. I am uh, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, but I will love to kind of learn that and, and, and do stuff like that with you guys. Um, so it will be a learning experience. So one of the first things we need after doing all of our prestige stuff is you probably want to go ahead and grab yourself a guide from open computers or the manual. Um, this thing is going to be very helpful if you guys are confused. I'm going to try my best to get through this as clean and as easy as possible. Um, so let's take a look. Open computers. Now we already have a few things from open computers that we got as like a i don't know like a, a present for crafting diamonds i have no idea why that was a thing but it totally was um we're gonna need some cutting wire i do know that's a thing what we're mainly looking towards getting is the the, the higher tier um computer and screens um and we don't really need that much for this program i am going to go over the basics for what we are going to need later on. We will need a keyboard and some things like that. We'll talk about all these crafting components. So a large portion of the crafting is not that interesting. Um, so I am going to skip most of it. But there are a couple of things that, as you can see, are a little interesting, um, like the crafting recipes for, I don't know, not the printed surrogates, but like the diamond right here, the diamond chip. Like it's it's literally a, a chip, which is kind of hilarious. Um, and, and things like that. There's some little quirks here and there in the crafting recipes. Um, apparently the drone, if I don't remember, if I remember correctly, some of these you can put on your feet. I think it's the drones um, casing you can put on your feet, which is kind of hilarious. Yeah, hover boots right here. Um, jump higher, fall deeper, and then walk better. Um, more with the new and patented hover boots TM. So yeah, hover boots are something you can make from this mod, which is kind of hilarious as well. Um, so yeah, the main thing, getting ourselves this going. Um, I don't know if I have any cooked cactus. I, I just don't think I do, which is kind of uh, hilarious because you would think I would have that. So let's go ahead, head to our tiny world here. <laughs> and so I love how we go like in and out of this dimension all the time. Um, we need our advanced smelting factory, and now we have a bunch of cactus in which we can do whatever we want with. All right, let's head back in here. Now we ho totally have that cactus available for the raw circuit boards. Let's get a, I don't know, advanced smelting factory. We can do that here. Let's go ahead and make a just one for ourselves. And we'll get that cooking in there. Turn that on. Perfect. Okay. So back to the good stuff. Open computers. We are also going to need some cable of some sort. Just a little bit. Um, a keyboard is something we're going to need. We're in the process of making the computer. And this is sort of like me sitting down and building an actual computer with you guys. It's kind of, it's going to be, you know, kind of that process. Um, we need what, uh, four of the button groups, four button groups, a, a numeric keypad, and then we're going to need our arrow keys. And that makes up a keyboard. You are going to need this as well. Um, and it says can be attached to screens to allow typing into them. This is a must have. Uh, we're also going to need some tier three, um, screens as well. Might as well make some microchips tier three. I'm only going to make one screen for right now because I don't think I need to make it any bigger just yet. We can always make these bigger later. I just want to learn the mod. 
So there's all of our circuits ready to go. So that should mean we have everything to make a computer case tier three. Perfect. All right, so we also need a power converter. I think we have everything for that. So there's our power converter, kind of goes along with our cable. This is how we're gonna get power into computer craft. So power converter goes into a cable, connects with a screen and the computer case. Um, the computer case needs a few things. Um, so when you actually build a computer, a computer, the few things you're gonna need is a CPU, a RAM, potentially a graphics card. If your CPU doesn't have one, in our case, let's just say the CPU doesn't have a graphics or integrated graphics. Um, and you're gonna need an operating system and your boot. Um, so you're gonna need those few things, basically your BIOS, your boot, which allows you to boot your drives, and then you can boot your OS from your drives. Uh, we need to set all that up. That is actually how computer craft works. Um, so we are gonna need some memory, and I think we can do, let's do it like a tier three memory. We only need one stick, I believe. Looks like it just requires a bit of diamond and some gold for these things. So there we go. We can do, we can get away with one memory stick, I'm pretty sure. We don't need to worry about servers. Um, now, we do need an, a net, an internet card, I do believe. An internet, yeah, an internet card right here. We need this. So we need a card base. Internet card. There we go. So we need that as well. So our memory, our internet card. What else do we need? We need a CPU, for sure. I don't think we need a high tier three, but I'm going to make it just because. This one is going to require a clock. There we go. Um, we have two different ones. We have a CPU and an APU. We're going to go with a CPU. So we just have a few things to make here. And what are we missing? More microchips. Missing some transistors. I don't think I was ever planning on saying that in a video. Here I am doing a PC guide build or PC build guide in Minecraft. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. All right, so now that we have that central processing unit, the only other thing we need, I believe, is our graphics card and a, a drive. We need a disk drive. I don't think there's uh, special tiers of disk drives. Doesn't look like it. So we have a disk drive, and then we can make an actual disk drive. Wow. Okay, so there's our disk drive. Um, what other thing? Oh yeah, we were making the graphics card. So we have data cards, graphics. There we go. All right, graphics. We can go all the way up to tier three. In our use case, I think a tier one will be just fine. But just to make things interesting... I'm going to go ahead and do a tier two. Um, it's not required. This just literally changes the resolution of your screen. And I don't think I want to ha display a huge screen. There, there's that tier two. And card base. All right. Last but not least, graphics card. All right. And next, we're going to need our ROM. Um, so right here is a small program source which contains the BIOS that the computer uses to boot. This should literally just be the Open Computer's Manual. Or it looks like we can... Yeah, this is what applies the Lua BIOS. So we need to get the actual um, EEP ROM there. Combine that with our manual. And that will give us our Lua boot BIOS, which is what we need. Now, we also need an operating system. And I believe that our set works with open OS, um, but you do have some different things. You have plan 9K operating system, you have network, network stack, and then you have open OS. I believe that this is gonna be running open OS, so we need just a floppy disk. There we go, floppy disk. And then that goes again with 
a book. In which I'm so surprised I have no paper at this point. There we go. All right, so we finally got that thing crafted and we craft that and we get open OS. So that should be just about everything we need to get started. We are gonna need a point. We are gonna need to feed this thing with a little bit of power. So let's find ourselves a cozy little corner to get started. So right here is where our power is going to connect. I'm just gonna connect power to the side. There we go. And we're gonna run cable from there into our system. So right here, we're gonna have our computer case, which is gonna connect directly here. You can see it is being fed some power. We're gonna run a cable up. Um, actually, I might, I might pull this out one more. We'll do one more cable. There we go. And then I'll put that here because I want the screen to actually go back one. So there we go. So just like that, so that is connected. And then we'll put the keyboard on top. Let's go ahead and open this up. So you can see in the tier three, we have slots for our disk drives. Um, it does say a tier three disk and I was looking. Oh, there are disks. I made the wrong kind of disk, didn't I? I gotta go back and make those. Okay, so let's make the right kind of disc this time. And we can go with a tier three, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Or whatever we have the means for. We can do a tier two. Um, there we go, raw components. It shouldn't take too much to get this all set up. We actually might make a tier three. It's four meg. It's not a large disc drive by any means. So there we go. I mean, might as well do this. All right, we already have the printed circuit. We just need some more diamond. Some more diamond chips. Perfect. Diamond chips for the win. All right, so large disk drive. We only need one. This is probably for something else. Uh, provides the same functionality as a normal disk drive, but must be installed in a rack. Ah, oh, that makes sense. All right, so everything you see here is going to have a place that needs to go into, like memory. Graphics card needs to go in its proper slot. So this is a graphics card tier two. This is an internet card tier two, right? So keep those in mind. And then we have the hard disk. All of which it goes there. And once we have that, we can go ahead and place our actual Lua BIOS in the actual BIOS slot. And in this case, with this actual case, it has an internal floppy disk that we can go ahead and install. You can actually hear it. Ah. Uh, I could just do that all day. Very, very satisfying. So what do we do now? Well, I guess all we can do is make sure all, our, all of our connections are secure and make sure our keyboard is actually connected to our screen, which it is touching the screen technically, and we can turn it on and hope that things start popping up on our screen, and which they are. So, very nice. Um, we do, have our, of course, have like this um, Android bar that's kind of in the way. But you can see here, it did boot up uh, fairly slow. So if we turn this off and then turn it back on again, you can see it's got to go through its thing, initializing system, and then finally there it goes. So what we can do is actually install OpenOS onto our drive. It's not too hard to do. Literally, it's as simple as just typing install. And install OpenOS, just hit Y and hit enter. And this is going to go through the process of installing OpenOS onto our computer drive. And yes, you're gonna get this long line of, of code and everything else like that, that you're gonna see it just basically copying pasting into the proper directories. Um, very, very simple. It may look really complicated, but 
I mean, all in all, it's not that complicated at all. Um, if you know any little thing about computers. So it's gonna ask, you wanna reboot after you're done? Just hit yes. And, bam, system is, is that, it's that much quicker. It is way faster to do it that way. So let's kind of talk a little bit about um, why we went with a network card and what we're gonna use that for. So online, um, let's see, the member, I guess is coming from uh, Finger Comp, is the guy's name, um, posted this lovely clock-based kind of program with Lua that is going to allow us to be able to see in-game time and real life time. Um, apparently, there's some little adjusting we can do to make the in-game or the real life time show properly, but it will show in-game time for us, which is really cool. So what what I need to do is kind of go through a few steps with you guys. So the first thing we need to do, uh, of course, is kind of pull that drive out because we no longer need that floppy, that open OS anymore. We can open up our screen in here, and what we can do is we can kind of install this program from uh, Pastebin. So we're gonna go Pastebin, get, because we're gonna be pulling from Pastebin. Um, we'll do dash F, which is going to overwrite an, an existing file if it does exist. And then we need to the hand type, I believe, because I don't think you can, I don't believe you can paste links in can you i don't think you can paste no i wish with the advanced you could actually paste but no you have to hand type so here is the link it's a capital or a capital k lowercase j h five s or capital s sorry i don't know if the capitals really matter but um there we go that is the actual code from which we will be pulling from uh, and that's going to pull the clock Lua script. So I'm going to go ahead and name it clock like they uh, recommend in their command. And that is going to be clock dot Lua. And this is normally how you would title your Lua command. You could have it named, I believe, start dot Lua or whatever you really want it to be named. Um, you're just going to need to remember what you name it. So we can go ahead and click that and hit enter. And it's going to download from Pastebin. It saved that data. We're still in the home directory, but we want to go to our root directory. So to go to root director, uh, directory, we just do two dots. And now we're in our actual root directory. Um, from the root directory, what we're, wanted, gonna, what we're wanted, wanting to do is to set up an automated, uh, just kind of an automated script that's going to restart or when our computer restarts, it's going to automatically load the clock program. Um, and that's all I really want to do with this thing. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to edit. Now that we're in this directory, auto run, which is going to pull up its own. This is a built in program. So there we are. We're gonna hit this file. Um, you see right here, we're gonna be creating a new file. So from within here, we're gonna type out os dot execute. And then we're gonna tell it where to pull from, which is our home directory, right? And then we have our clock dot Lua that we're pulling from. Right. And so after we have this, we make sure we have everything set properly. Um, we can go ahead and control S to save. If you didn't know, if you don't know, the control S is like synonymous for, for saving in almost anything. And then control W to exit. Now we are still in our root directory. We could go um, CD home if we want to get back to our home directory. Um, and I think if you wanted to just run, I think you can do run dot Lua if you wanted to straight up run. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's load. I don't know. Anyways, it's going to automatically restart whenever we turn this off and turn it back on. It should boot into that program. And there we go. We have a clock. 
that should tell us our time and date. Now the date is a little bit, no, the date is wrong. Um, so the date is wrong. I'm trying to figure out the bottom number down below. That is very wrong. And then the time my, against my time is very wrong. Um, so there are a few things that apparently that you have, I have the ability to edit. Um, so let's go ahead and open this back up. I think we can do, um, control W maybe. Oh, no, wait, never mind. We do have some things we can do. We can control click on the screen or click on the screen. Shift clicking on the screen screen gives us a our Minecraft in game time. All right, and it's telling us it's Wednesday, which is definitely not right. Um, and our other time, which is the GMT, and the wrong date and everything else. Okay, so we have some editing to do, that's for sure. I think the in-game time is correct because it it is dark, right? No, it's daylight. So I think your in-game time, though, is correct. And it's evening, which is correct. Minecraft e evening time. I don't know if this is dedicated to that. I think this is supposed to be set for, like, um... Yeah, this is in-game, Minecraft in-game time, right? Huh. What is it supposed to be real time? So if you've already gotten your computer all set up and you've turned it on and you end up on this screen after, you know, you know you have it set as an automatic clock. Well, what you can do is open this up and you can shut down any automatic program by holding Control alt c and that will reset it. Now you may be stuck on this little window and be like, I don't want it to be so tiny. You can do, Resolution, and then do like 60, 20. And that'll give you a pretty decent sized window to work with now, right? Um, so, we can actually go in and edit this program. So there are some interesting things that you can do after you're in that program. Um, and also figured out, if you want to paste something, just hit insert on your computer and it will paste into this screen. So if you do have lines of code that you do want to actually import in here, you can use your insert key, um, which is probably the only time you probably ever used your insert key unless you've really messed around with uh, uh, spe uh, sp special applications that require it. Um, but anyways, let's talk about this. So we needed to get in here and actually edit that file that I was talking about. Um, so what we need to do is from our root directory type um, edit, and then clock dot Lua. And this is gonna pull up a bunch of different things um, that we can edit. Now, on their actual site, they have a few things that we can actually edit here. Now, these are just color codes. We have time zone, which for me is actually negative um, six. They have a section for the correct, but I'm not too sure exactly what I need to change there, as it is very fast. And some of these things seem to be um, running really fast. And I don't exactly know why, but we, what I is supposed to be able to do is change that, and that should help. So I don't think there's even a function to change it from like a 24 hour. I think it just stays 24 hour. So if I hit Control S, that saves it. Um, and then we can do Control W to get back out. And then what we should be able to do is just reboot. And it should load back in that program. And hopefully, when we click here, it's fixed. It is GMT negative six, which is proper, but it is not Thursday for me. So I think this may have been back for Windows 7 or Windows 8, I don't know but maybe they changed something in Windows 10 that this thing is not recognizing. But anyways, it is pretty cool to have like our Minecraft in-game time, even though it's not responding properly. 
still, that idea is very cool. Um, now, there are other things that we can actually do. Uh, there are other things that can actually interact with different blocks. They can interact with applied energistic systems. I just wanted to touch, um, we may do some of that thing, or some of those things later on. Or if any of you guys have some really interesting um, things, you guys should be able to link those down in the comment section below. Or if not, you can always PM me over at the discords. Um, you can also find that link down in the description below if you find any interesting Lua codes um, that we can potentially use. Um, Cause I'm not a programmer. So that is just something that I, I mean, I enjoy learning things, which I've, I've learned a lot today. Um, but you know, I, I about, I go about as far as being able to navigate my CMD uh, to navigate my drives, my file structure. That's about as far as I can go um, and do a few simple maintenance things like that. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's little episode on uh, open computers as I know some people were really wanting to see this um, and it can do some really, really advanced things. So guys, if you are coders out there, just, you know, send me a little, uh, send me a little DM. Maybe, uh, maybe I can showcase, uh, showcase, uh, one of your, uh, I don't know, one of your things. If anybody can make a better clock, that would be awesome. Because I would love to have a bigger clock, uh, to be able to use in game. That'd be really cool. Um, anyways, guys, I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.